Hey friends, today I'm super excited to go birding with you. You might think birding's really hard because sometimes birds are really hard to see. But here's a trick. We don't have to see them to go birding. We can bird by ear or learn to speak bird. Seeing birds in the forest or thick vegetation can be really challenging, but even bird scientists doing surveys probably detect about 90% of the species with their ears. Okay gang, today we're gonna go over three tips that are gonna help you learn how to speak bird. Tip number one, I've been covering some miles on the trail, but the best thing you can do is to stop, close your mouth, and open your ears. Just like other wildlife, birds can get scared away by humans. And if you just take a few minutes to be quiet and listen, you'll be amazed at the number of birds that show up. I've been sitting here quietly for a few minutes following tip number one, and already there's about three different bird species that have shown up. But how am I supposed to know what species they actually are? That's where tip number two comes in. I'm going to use something known as a mnemonic device. All mnemonic means is just a pattern of words or letters that helps you remember something. So for example, over here, there's a warbling vireo, and the mnemonic phrase for warbling vireo is, if I seize you, I will seize you and squeeze you till you squeak. Listen. One really tiny bird that's really hard to see because it hides in the tops of conifers, but you hear it all the time, is the ruby-crowned kinglet. And the mnemonic for ruby crown kinglet is C C C choo 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 cheeseburger cheeseburger cheeseburger. I love cheeseburgers. You hear? Okay, I'm still hearing a bunch of different species, but one really neat species that I hardly ever see is a Swainson's thrush. And the mnemonic for Swainson's thrush is an ascending flute-like whistle that kind of sounds like wee 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 What's really cool about thrush voices, and this is all birds, they have something called a syrinx. And a syrinx is kind of like what humans have if you've ever heard of vocal cords. In birds, the syrinx doesn't contain vocal cords, but it has some membranes that sit right above the split at the bottom of the windpipe, right before it splits into the lungs. And what this allows birds to do is to vocalize when they're both breathing in and breathing out. Having a syrinx also allows birds to sing two different notes at the same time. So thrushes are actually playing a duet all by themselves. That's why their song sounds so cool. Listen. Over here, there's a chickadee. And the mnemonic for chickadee is actually its name. Chickadee dee or chickadee dee dee. They have another call that's also here sweetie or here sweet sweetie. And part of that variation is individual birds, but we actually have two species of chickadee, black cap chickadee and mountain chickadee. Mountain chickadee sounds like a black cap chickadee with a sore throat. Don't worry if you can't tell them apart. Just know that's a chickadee. Tip number three, use your tools. Free apps like Merlin and BirdNet are really helpful for getting familiar with some of the most common birds in your area. Check out books at the library. Check out your local bird and nature club. Find people who might know birds a little bit better than you. In the end, I find listening to bird song is one of the best ways to connect with the natural world. If you're just getting started, all it takes is a little patience. Until next time, stay curious. Thank mm -hmm. you.